So, after two years, a lengthy camp, well, not really a lengthy campaign for governor, but a campaign for governor where Murphy was just chucking the sanctuary state terminology out there over and over and over again. Finally, <laughs> his appointed attorney general um, has come out and said, stop calling New Jersey a sanctuary state, attorney general says. This is being brought to us from New Jersey 101.5, written by Sergio Bichad, a Bichad. Bichad, I want to say Bichad. Feels a little more accurate. Uh, update, Cumberland Jail says it never got ICE to turn a request before inmates release. Yeah, there's been some, um, there's, like, the state has been at war with the federal here in New Jersey about uh, when it comes to immigration policies. And th it's really just done nothing but cause confusion and had the sheriff office going, well, some county um, sheriff offices going back and forth with the attorney general. New Jersey is not a sanctuary state, according to Attorney General uh, Gruber Grewal, who also said the cop, the local cops will not be doing the feds work on immigration enforcement. Thusly, somewhat making it a, making it a sanctuary state like you're contradicting yourself uh Grubal. that was the message the state's top law enforcement official repeated friday when he announced that all local law enforcement agencies in the state would be banned from signing cooperation agreements with federal immigration authorities once again <clears throat> once again countering what it is that like your your the initial statement the initial sentence in this whole statement like oh this isn't a sanctuary state but we're not gonna help the we're not gonna do uh what the federal law demands that um ask of us to do primarily because what like you what you think state supersedes federal it doesn't it really doesn't the pronouncement was a complete disavowal of language used by Governor Phil Murphy during his campaign for governor when he said during a debate that if need be, we will be a sanctuary, not just city, but state. That's very clear. And it's been two years. So what? Like, oh, you just came to this conclusion now that this is really starting to blow up, blow up in your face? After winning his election against former Republican Governor Kim Guadano, yeah, let's be real, Kim Guadano was sent out there as a sacrificial lamb, the same way they sent that uh, Bonaco lady out against Murphy, uh, out against Chris Christie during his uh, during his reelection bid. Like the the establishment is the establishment, the party really doesn't matter, and they have this propensity of sending some soccer mom out there to get an ass beat. When <laughs> When when they just want to get when they're just giving up on an election because they knew that the Republican brand in the state, there was no way in hell the Republican brand in the state is still suffering because of Chris Christie's uh, nonsense. Well, I, I think I'll be nice and just call it nonsense. Who used Murphy's words in campaign ads against him? Murphy pulled back on the term, calling it an unenlightened buzzword. But it's a buzzword that immigration hardliners and supporters of President Donald Trump have continued to level at the administration. Critics like to claim that we are providing, quote, sanctuary to dangerous criminals. Nothing could be further from the truth. I can't tell, Gruwal said Friday, using some of the clearest language to, to date to refute critics of the policy. Under our Immigrant Trust Directive, if you break the law, you go to jail regardless of your immigration status. No one, I repeat, no one gets a free pass in the state to commit crime. Bullshit! <laughs> This notion of sanctuary is a complete red herring, and it is false narrative put out, being put out there by Governor Murphy. Grewal, mm, you being real disingenuous right here, bro. That was put out there by your boss. Make no mistake, he said, to suggest that we are somehow giving anyone a free pass is nothing but a political, politically convenient statement to make in the current environment. This, uh, that's gross. That really is gross. Gruwal's statement comes nearly a year after he implemented his office's immigrant trust directive, which on Friday, he said, drew a clear, bright line between our state's law enforcement officers on one hand, who enforce our state's criminal laws, and federal civil immigration officers on the other hand, who enforce the country's immigration laws. But notice the key word, notice the, the word that connects both of those, uh, that literally connects both of these uh these 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 ideas so you're compart trying to compartmentalize well, no 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 there is a guiding line and that word is laws 
okay these are the laws and state does not supersede federal and if the federal comes it doesn't matter if you like who's in the office or not i'm sorry but this country is bigger and better than one freaking person donald day donald j trump included that's the thing i think that gets me the most angry when it comes to um all these people that want to just kick the back into trump supporters god they're still americans and Americans are pretty amazing. How about you take a moment, figure out, ask them why they voted the way that they did, and then hey, have the have the debate, have the conversation. But no, you just want to say the Trump supporter, me, and it's like, well, what the hell? You're not giving them. You're not having. You're not engaging with your felt with your supposed fellow Americans. The directive limited local law enforcement cooperation with ICE. Cops are not supposed to question people about their immigration status unless it's relevant to an investigation. Jails are only supposed to inform ICE about someone in detention if they've been charged with serious violent offenses such as murder, forced entry, arson, assault, bias crimes, and certain domestic violence offenses. On Friday, Gruwal updated the directive to expand the list of crimes to include weapons and more domestic violence offenses. He also banned the two... 287G agreements named after the section of the Federal Immigration and Nationality Act that Gruwal says deputizes local officials to enforce civil immigration laws. Only the only, but that's the thing. Okay, so you're also confusing civil with because by breaking the law, by entering illegally, they are thusly committing a crime. So it transforms from the civil to the criminal. Make no mistake, this is a criminal act. They're in the commission of a criminal act, Gruwal. Only the Cape May and Monmouth County Sheriff's offices, both run by elected Republican sheriffs, maintain such agreements. Gruwal said the agreements were redundant because the state's immigrant trust directive already allows jails to notify ICE and hold defendants and inmates for ICE. But more importantly, Gruwal said the agreements undermine public safety. Most of the public don't even be no, don't, don't pay attention to this shit. You, you, you do know that, right? Like most of the, the general public does not pay attention to this nonsense that you guys are engaged in. Prosecutors and public officials said that immigrant communities need to be able to call police and cooperate with investigations and prosecutions when they are victims or witnesses of crimes. They will be reluctant to do so if they fear that cops will turn them into ice. Such fear became a factor in the search for five-year-old Dulce Maria Alves, an American citizen in Brighton whose police, yeah, whose parents are illegal as hell, who police may have been abducted from a park on September 16th. Officially, the Officials and the girl's family went before news cameras to beseech people who may have any information about the girl's disappearance to come forward without fear of being asked about their immigration status. And that should go to show you how many immigrants and how many non-Americans are living in the state, which is kind of nutty for, you know, us being a country, <laughs> like America being a country. Uh, based on a number of events and experiences, we know that doubt still exists despite our best efforts, particularly in the moment where there is overzealous enforcement of our country's immigration laws, Gruwal said. Overzealous? Like, they, bruh, like, it's been way too lax for way too long. What are you talking about? Our job here is to enforce our state's immigration law, our state's criminal laws. Their job is to enforce federal immigration laws. They should do their jobs. We'll do ours. Oh, my goodness. The directive is facing a legal challenge in federal court by Ocean County's Republican-controlled border freeholders. A handful of municipalities have passed resolutions supporting the lawsuit. A day before Gruwal's announcement in Nork, in Nork, U.S. Customs and Immigration Enforcement Acting Director Matthew Albentz criticized local jurisdictions for not honoring what are known as ICE detainers, requests by the agency and local jails to hold individuals into ICE until ICE agents can pick them up. Fall, ICE faulted the jails in Middlesex in Cumberland counties for releasing a man charged with forced entry of a teenager and two men charged with domestic violence incidents. ICE agents arrested 54 other individuals in the state who had been released from custody. New Jersey law allows most defendants in criminal cases to be released from jail pending trial with certain conditions. In fewer cases, judges will be de defendant, will keep defendants who are considered a potential danger to the public behind bars until their trials. The rules replace the state's previous bail system. Gruwal compared ICE state roundup of 54 people in a week to the 24,000 people arrested on average in New Jersey and suggested that ICE wasn't doing its job. In most dangerous cases, the most uh, with the most dangerous individuals, we provide that notice to immigration authorities, and so they are not picking up people. It's on them. 
but don't point the finger at any of us because we work too hard to improve public safety in this state yeah by under by undermining federal law i don't see I, I don't see how i don't see how that works out but you know what else it's not clear why ice was not able to pick up the three men from middlesex and cumberland prisons before their release gruwal added that critics also like to claim that we're releasing dangerous criminals back into the street and we need these agreements with ice to stop this from happening this is flat out wrong and those who say or suggest otherwise are either mistaken or deliberately misleading the public at uh, no different than you everybody has their agenda bro everybody does the Immigrant Trust Directive explicitly allows county jails to identify the most violent and most serious offenders, including those charged with forced entry, murder, arson, robbery, and other serious offenses, and to provide their information to federal authorities, he said. And if a judge grants bail and decides to release one of those individuals, or if one of those individuals finishes their jail sentence, our directive allows those jails to continue holding those individuals for a period of time to ensure they are properly transferred into federal custody. Monmouth County Sheriff Sean Golden on Friday said the new directive ignores federal and state laws. Law enforcement throughout Monmouth, and count, throughout Monmouth County never wants to be faced with a situation where a dangerous, undocumented immigrant is released from jail and poses a threat to a community, he said. However, this sanctuary directive will make our communities less safe, since it places people in those communities at risk for increased violence. Golden did not respond to written follow-up questions asking which laws he believed the directive was breaking and to explain why he did not think that the state's immigration trust directive would be would allow his jail to continue to notify ICE and hold individuals for ICE detention. Gruall said the two counties had seven days to end their ICE agreements. It was not clear Friday whether the sheriffs intended to challenge the new directive in court. The longer we have this debate, the longer we have the conversation about the need for these two 87G agreements. The longer that we irresponsibly use the term sanctuary state or city, particularly in New Jersey, the more confusion we create. Your boss started this gruall said i think all of us all of us in law enforcement all of you in the media have a responsibility to correct that because it is a complete fabrication and misleading statement that murphy made to suggest that new jersey in any way is a sanctuary state period not the case you know what i'm gonna gruall here's the deal gruall i'm gonna give you that you finally came up and said something you finally was like okay yeah we're not a sanctuary state dead that unfortunately damage has been done and it's been way too long that you sat there just oh yeah mm -hmm, sanctuary state we're good with this we're okay with this yes yeah phil murphy sanctuary state this is what happens when you purchase your seat right because phil murphy ain't know a damn thing about jersey man coming in here but he had the connections and power and the national establishment backing him. The national establishment got the money. So they were able to, you know, fast track his nomination to whereas, you know, Philip Sweeney, all these other individuals, Les like Lesniak actually ran. But really, like when the establishment and the machine is behind you, there is no, I'm telling you, man, they, they there was it was nothing but a cakewalk for Murphy to get to the seat. And the deal is, is that. It wasn't it. It, it it's it, it's totally backfired the rhetoric that he was using then was all that progressive flowery bernie sanders bullshit that has since been proven like just mm, you should have stuck you should have stayed away from it and now here we are two years later having to having to walk it back so yeah any I, I saw this coming you can go to my other channel the official elected like official i covered the entirety of the um of the 2017 election so by all means you i was warning about this then i've been 100 percent right this entire time and that's why this video exists because yeah i've been i've been doing my damnedest to I, like I, I i see i can see problems before problems become problems and i try to stop that problem from becoming a problem but unfortunately you know people won't do what people do right and now here you are having to walk it back and and honestly uh attorney general you may want to get your boss to make a far more uh, resounding statement than that okay so with that being said we're gonna bring this one to an end all the internet stuff if you liked it toss it a like dislike yeah go ahead do that too i ain't scared of you sub if you enjoy my fantastic voice and you want to get videos like this every single day share because sharing is caring and youtube and bitch you didn't like come on man they don't feel me like that but i but you do that's why i appreciate and love you and speak let me know what do you think in the comments i mean who who could have seen this coming and, and it was this guy but but i mean you may feel differently if you do let me know and until the next one